Hi there friends and welcome to another update on Iceland. Today is October 31st. Happy Halloween out there. And today we're going to look at the new Met Office update along with some of the usual data that we've been monitoring as we've been watching things unfold on the Reykjanes Peninsula over the past year really that we've been looking at things. And then I'll even look back at um, some of the things that were happening about this time a year ago. So thanks again for joining me. I am geology professor Sean Wilsey. Let's get right to it. It's a pretty brief update today, but I thought with the new Met Office um, update coming out that it would be worthwhile to spend some time doing an update here today. So this came out two days ago on the 29th. Um, and not a whole lot of news here, but basically the magma intrusion into the subsurface continues, still seeing the influx of magma. And so it looks like we're going to see something, it looks like the earliest we might see some sort of activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula it might be like late November. I'd say late November through late December is probably looking like the most likely window at this time. Of course, uh, that is all subject to change. And so... Um, looking at the update here, just magma accumulation and uplift, all the signs we typically see associated with the accumulation of magma in the subsurface that's continuing. And what we're also starting to see just very slowly ticking upwards over these last few weeks is, is a little bit more earthquake activity. So as that system starts to fill with magma and that magma starts filling the available space and the cracks and the fractures, whatever voids are in the subsurface, as that starts to fill, that magma then starts to provide pressure on the rocks. And as that pressure causes rocks to fail and break, that's the earthquake activity that we're likely seeing a little bit there uh, in that region. Um, and so new evaluations suggest the likelihood of a new magma intrusion or an eruption increases towards late November. And so they've got the the Svartsengi station that we is the main station we monitor because it looks like it's the closest to where the magma storage zone in the subsurface is accumulating. And so you can see this yearly plot here, uh, north-south movement, east-west movement. And the one we're mainly looking at here is this one on the bottom that shows the up and down motion. And this goes all the way back to last November, just coming out of November 10th or so. You can see the uh, uplift and then each one of these red lines is either a eruption uh, well it eruption and then the blue line here there's two blue lines those are intrusions that's where magma moved out of the storage zone and then occupied some area in the subsurface but didn't actually make it its way all the way to the surface so this is the trend we've been looking at here on the far right uh, going here into the end of October and you can see how similar it looks to the last run that went from June or so and then culminated with the August 22nd eruption. So we're looking quite similar to that trend uh, in terms of the uplift data. And the real question is, you know, are we going to get to that same threshold that triggered the last eruption or are we going to need to exceed that? Because if you look at each one of these sort of tipping points, they tend to be a, a little bit higher than the previous one. And so that's where a little bit of the gray area and the unknown is as we move forward. Um, let's see, what else do we have here on the Met Office update? Um, I think the main thing here in their discussion is they just start talking about the, the seismic activity is going to increase as we get closer to filling that system. Um, and that will be the main thing to look for moving forward. So let's check out those earthquakes. Here's the last 24 hours. And if you've been watching a lot of these updates in the past, you'll remember that we haven't seen, there's been days and sometimes even weeks at a time where there's been very few to no earthquake activity northeast of Grindavik along this uh, Sunukur lineament, the fissure system or the area above that magmatic dike. And here we have just in the last um, 24 hours, four earthquakes, very small earthquakes, nothing to write home about, obviously. We're starting to see a little bit more of an uptick there. A um, little bit of activity over here in the Krishivik system. Uh, just west of Lake Klevravatn, and it looks like we have a 2.6 quake and then a bunch of aftershocks associated with that. But again, there's no evidence that shows that this is related to magma movement. If we saw these earthquakes in conjunction with 
uplift, if we saw the ground deformation and these earthquakes, that would be a much bigger indicator that potentially something might be going on over here. But we've just seen earthquakes and we know that this place is a, this area is an active plate boundary. And so without the ground deformation signal, we assume that a lot of these quakes are tectonic in nature and not related to magma migration and certainly not magma migration up towards the surface where you could potentially store magma and then ultimately lead to some sort of eruption. So there's the past day or so. Looking at the past week in this area just northeast of Gudindavik, um, maybe, I don't know, a dozen or so volcanoes there, mostly pretty small. The biggest one here being a 1.6 that occurred uh, about six days ago, almost a week ago. So again, but these are right along the area we expect the most likely area for the next eruption to be is just east of the power plant, more or less in the area of the last several eruptions. Uh, the one caveat being in with the last eruption, even though it, it uh, ruptured and created a four, I believe it was a four kilometer long fissure, that magmatic activity concentrated in the north end, and that's where we saw the most uh, pervasive and large lava flows was at the north end. And so it'll, it'll take some time before we can see if that signature and that type of uh, location is what is going to occur with the next event. Um, I did some different things here. So this is the past week from October 24th to today, um, but I also did a couple other week long periods. So here's the week prior, the 17th to the 24th. So you can see again, most of those earthquakes, it's about the same number or so, clustering right along that Northeast Southwest trending lineament. <coughs> Excuse me, um, looking at the week prior to that, maybe a couple fewer quakes. So we might be seeing quakes slowly increasing but again so few quakes that um, you know it, it's definitely within error and I don't think there's def a definitive trend that showed up just yet and then just for kicks and giggles I decided to plot up just to remind us what this area was looking like at about this time last year so here is the earthquakes for 2023 from October 24th to October 31st. So the exact same time frame as what we see here. So here it is in 2024. And here's the exact same dates, the 24th of October to the 31st of October, but a year prior. And you can just see just all the earthquake activity uh, that we had there just north of Gudindavik, stretching from uh, almost towards the Edward system out over to where the eruption actually occurred. And you can almost start to see the trend that ultimately became that that through going northeast southwest dike system. But again, just an incredible um, amount there. I mean, on this plot here, let me see where I'm at here. There's, um, well, I think on the whole plot of the whole country, there's 367 earthquakes over the past week, this in 2024. And when we go to last year, 2023, and look at all the quakes in the country, it's over 3,000, almost 3,500. And the bulk of those quakes, of course, being right here near Glendivik. And of course, a lot of these quakes being uh, quite large, three and a half. Ultimately, we got to, uh, there's a four, 4.3. And then there was even eventually, as we went further into November, some fives as well. And those were the ones that really rattled the residents. So just an interesting look back at what, what this area is capable of when it comes to earthquakes preceding some sort of magmatic event, whether that's an intrusion, <coughs> excuse me, or an extrusion. Um, looking at the GPS data real quick here, uh, the trend continues. So if we come down here to Svartsengi, we see that fairly linear slope there just continuing more or less. I mean, data points going up and down day to day, but a pretty even trend going upwards. And then last thing here, <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a bit of a cough there. Um, this is a news story, and it features Professor Thorderson, who thinks that there could be an eruption by the end of the month. So by the end of November. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and talks a little bit about here about the the intrusion of magma going on over time, and that. Um, talks about the, the rate at which the magma was accumulating with early on, you know, a year or or so ago, eight, nine months ago, it was like nine to 10 cubic meters per second. Now it's down to three. So we're not seeing this the same rate of magma influx into the storage 
system as we once did, but it's still pretty steady and we know we have more volume, more um, capacity for that magma to accumulate. So pretty interesting article there. I'll put that in the video description. As always, I'll keep you posted as things develop here in Iceland and we'll just see how this looks going forward. Will it be a November eruption? Will it be a December eruption? Will it even be a 2024 eruption or will it be something that gets kicked into the next year? Um, time will tell and we'll just watch the earthquakes and the ground deformation as we have been. So thanks for your time. Thanks for your support and we'll see you next time. Take care.